So Aaron, we're starting with Aaron tonight. Yeah, we're changing up the order a bit, but uh, we'll keep you on your toes. <laughs> uh, this is Aaron Santos, he's going to talk about, I assume, uh, estimation? Alright, just uh, one moment. Um, well, like Brian said, my name is Aaron Santos, and um, apparently I'm not starting yet. There we go. Um, I have to confess, I'm not, I'm not really a good speaker for this forum because I'm not much of a maker. My, my background is in physics. Um, but as a physicist, I like to consider myself sort of a, a theoretical maker. Um, so you might ask, well, well, why are you a theoretical maker? Um, it's very simple. I suck at building things. But as a, as a theoretical maker, it gives you the opportunity to, to, to calculate the types of things that, in principle, you could make if you had time, money, and talent. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about why you might want to tinker theoretically. Um, how exactly should you do this? And I'm going to use some examples uh, to, to really illustrate what I mean by this. So why might you want to tinker theoretically? Well, the first reason is that it develops critical thinking and reasoning skills. Always good things to have. It can also act as a very good idea filter so that you can say, well, this is a good idea, I want to make this, but this is a bad idea, I don't want to make this. And it's also a fun game to play. And the reason it's a fun game to play is because there's a lot of fun things you can calculate. Uh, you can calculate how long it would take to eat the state of the marshmallow man. You can calculate how fat a hockey player would have to be to completely block the goal. Um, but the example I really want to get into now is something that uh, a maker here actually produced, and it's um, a hamster battery. And the question is going to be, how many hamsters would it take to power a mansion? Now, the basic idea is that a hamster turning a wheel is no different than a wind turbine. Uh, you just combine that with um, some electrical induction and you can use that to power things. So what you're going to do to calculate how many, power, how many hamsters it would take to power a mansion, you're going to start with what you know and look up some other things. So I know that one hamster uh, might be able to power 50 LEDs. I can look up how much uh, power Al Gore's mansion took, because that was in the news a few weeks ago. Then I'm going to use the things that I learned in high school chemistry, and I'm just going to cancel units. So if I have hamsters per LED and I have LEDs per volt, I get hamsters per volt. And then I'm just going to do this a bunch of times and use a little bit of math until I get hamsters per mansion. And doing out the math, you see you get about 15,000 hamsters to power a mansion. Now, this is just a silly example. So there's something you're probably asking yourselves right now. Um, specifically, is there any time when this is actually useful? And it turns out it is. So if you've, if you've been reading Wired magazine or, or any other um, geek uh, reading things, you might have heard of something called the, the, the Vertical Farms Project, which is a group of people that say essentially that um, if you have a 30-story building and I uh, make a giant greenhouse out of this, then this is a way to make fresh green produce locally in big cities. And you can feed with, 30 of these built, with 150 of these buildings, you can feed an entire city. And so you can ask, is this feasible? So again, we're going to start with what we know. Uh, if you've grown potatoes, you know roughly how much area they take. Uh, you know how many calories a day you need to survive. You know how many days there are in a year. Uh, you know how many calories are in a potato. So doing all the math, you, you multiply a bunch of these things together, get units to cancel, and you find that you would feed about 0.01% of a uh, city's population uh, with a vertical farm. And even if you had 150 of them, you'd only feed about 1.5% of the people. So this is not a very good idea. So this shows you roughly how uh, estimation can be a good idea filter. And you can use this to find better solutions. So there's another project called the Solar Roadway Project. And it turns out that if you panel every road in America with solar panels, that, that's enough energy to run all the entire country. So that's a much, much better project to invest your money in. Um, so to get away from the practical a little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit about an age-old question that everybody here in this room, I'm sure, has wondered at some point. Wait for it. Should have timed this out better. There we go. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Now, there's a lot of ways to answer this question. You could just try licking, but if you've ever licked anything for a long time, you know that your tongue dries out and your neck starts to hurt pretty quickly. Um, 
The other way of doing this is that you could uh, you could try to do the maker solution where you can actually build, uh, you can go online and find that people have actually made pops, uh, popsicle liquors before, um, featuring gears and artificial tongues, but as an estimator, I want to just sit down and calculate this very quickly. So I want to start with what I know. Uh, I know roughly the entire country. So that's, uh, I know that every time I lick it, I remove a very small, barely noticeable amount of material. Uh, and I know that the smallest thing I can see is about 10 microns big. So uh, putting these facts together and just doing a little bit of math, you can, ca you can calculate that it would take about, come on, come on, there you go, about 800 licks to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop. Now, you might question my number here, but I actually did have a friend who counted in college, and they got about 900 licks. Um, so we, even, even using this very simple technique, you can calculate things that people have been wanting, wondering for many years. So once again, my name is Aaron Santos. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can also go on my blog at Diary of Numbers. Uh, and tomorrow, I'll be posting an estimation contest there. Uh, and if you win, you get a free copy of my book, How Many Licks, uh, how many licks or How to Estimate Damn Near Anything. And with that,